Let's do another use case with Boolean objects, and we'll also get into rocks, I think. So I'm going to go out of edit mode, hit control N to clear my canvas. Let's go ahead and close out this transform menu. So we have our objects here. I'm going to go ahead and select the tool palette. I'm going to choose a cube 3D, drag it out on my canvas, go into edit mode, or hit T, make poly mesh 3D. Let's go ahead and turn on polyframes so we can see what we're doing here. And then under the subtool menu, go ahead and hit duplicate. And with this duplicate selected, hit W to get our gizmo. Let's go ahead and scale that down uniformly. We can go ahead and turn off solo mode as well. Uh, we're scaling it inside this object. If we turn on transparency, you're going to see we're making the object smaller. Let's go ahead and move it up. So it's interpenetrating this object. Let's turn off transparency. And with the smaller box selected, go ahead and hit the second icon, which is subtractive. And click the live boolean render on. If you turn polyframe off, you're going to see we have a live boolean of this. Like I've mentioned before, if you go to my YouTube channel to the playlist and you go to the ZBrush 4R8 What's New, ZBrush 4R8 What's New playlist, that'll walk you through all of the live boolean options. You can see here, you can move this however you'd like, you can scale it, you can duplicate it, however you want to utilize this boolean mesh. Once you're happy with the result, Go to Subtool, Boolean, hit Make Boolean Mesh, and then we have a U Mesh out here. Go ahead and select that one. And now we have a Boolean result between those two. So if you're using imported CAD data, say you're going to Z Plugin, 3D Print Hub, import STL file, or you're bringing in FBX files of CAD data, you'll probably have very kind of all over the place, very harsh transitions between sharp edges like this. So one cool thing you can do with Sculptor's Plus Mode, if we go into our Trim Dynamic brush, which for you guys will be BTD for Trim Dynamic, you can now immediately just go across these harsh edges and go ahead and trim those down as needed. You can go back in with your H-Polish brush, you can go ahead and polish those down. Again, we have Sculptor's Plus Mode turned on, so it's automatically tess tessellating these objects. What you may have had to do before, if we try to do Trim Dynamic with that off, you're going to see it. there's nothing to really trim there. There's no real geometry. The verts and the triangulation is kind of all over the place. So what you probably had to do in the past was go down here to Geometry, Dynamesh. Go ahead and crank that resolution up a little bit. Go ahead and Dynamesh this object. That replaces all of this geometry with new geometry. And now you can feel free to go through here and trim dynamic along these edges. Now, I don't think... Let's go ahead and turn off Live Boolean. I don't think I've mentioned this before, but... If we have Trim Dynamic with Sculptures Plus Mode turned on and we have Dynamesh, you can use Dynamesh in conjunction with Sculptures Plus Mode. It's not a big deal. All you got to do is Control Drag. That'll re-Dynamesh your object, and now you can continue to use Sculptures Plus Mode. So you can use these both in conjunction with each other. If you want to, say, round these edges out, you can smooth them down at a lower tessellation, Control Drag, Dynameshing at a higher resolution, or the opposite. If you want to drop your Dynamesh resolution down, Control Drag. That'll lower the resolution of your object, and then you can go through here and add detail as you want to. Just keep in mind that as you're adding detail through here, and you Dynamesh at whatever resolution you're at, you will lose resolution. You'll have to, you know, retessellate that, so just keep that in mind. But you can use Sculptures Plus Mode and Dynamesh together as much as you'd like. But like I mentioned before, if we undo back down to just our regular, our previous Boolean object, you can immediately go in here and you can use your trim brush to go through here and start wearing down these edges. Now, if you are if you do a lot of environment sculpting and you want to do a lot of rock stuff, the ability to do this is pretty sweet. On that low resolution geometry, you can immediately hop in there and start making changes. If we hit the comma key here, you can go into your brush menu. You can say, take the mallet brush. And we'll do mallet fast here. Then you can use your, use your mallet brush again with Sculptures Plus Mode, Plus Mode turned on. And you can immediately start chewing away those edges. Or you can hit the comma key, go to your brushes. Let's go to the trim area. We'll do trim smooth border. And now you can use trim smooth border to kind of just go through and chip away at these corners. Again, tessellating those corners on the fly. Just to demonstrate one more time, turn off Sculptures Plus Mode. And there's not a whole lot you're able to do there on that geometry turn it back on, and you're just fine. You're able to test light on the fly. Now, because it's a freehand stroke, you can go into your alphas and grab, say, a square alpha, and you can change that so you get a little bit of a nicer look with Trim Smooth Border making a rocky type surface. And again, you can hold down Alt if you want to and start getting those results as well. And you can go in here with your standard brush, make the Z intensity, let's make it really intense, brush size really small, and you can immediately turn off L 
and you can start going through here and making cracks where it's already tessellated because the density is pretty high. Like I mentioned before, if you're going up here where there's not a lot of density, you're gonna to have to go along these surfaces. So you're gonna see it starts kind of skipping, and these areas, not a big deal. You'll be able to sculpt with a small brush, no problem. Then these areas are a little tougher, so you may need to pre-prep those areas, grab your smooth brush, take your Z intensity down to zero, smooth this area out to tessellate it a bit, and then go back in here with your standard brush, and now you're free, bring that Z intensity back up, and now you're free to go through here and sculpt cracks all you want.